2020, during a media interview, I was asked if I had hope for the future of our planet. I was asked what I thought needed to happen for our ocean to recover from plastic pollution and increased carbon dioxide. And if there's one thing the last 10 years of sailing around the world has shown me, is that our ocean is incredibly resilient. It has an amazing ability to repair itself and bounce back if we can just leave it alone. That means to stop taking fish and oil out and stop putting more plastic and pollution in. So I answered by saying, it's quite simple, really. We just need to stop. And little did I know back then the meaning of those words when mid-March the whole world ground to a halt and quite literally stopped. For me, the news of lockdown came through on the sat phone while I was in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on a sailing expedition to research plastic pollution between Easter Island and Tahiti. It was barely possible to be any further away from an airport than we were at that moment. If we sailed fast, meaning six miles an hour, we would make it to Tahiti in two weeks, maybe in time for the last flight out before the airport shut down. We held our breath as we heard about borders closing and death tolls rising. We savoured our time on board in our COVID-free bubble wondering what we would find when we finally reached shore. Since then, we've seen some incredible changes on our planet. Carbon emissions have dropped as we've stopped flying and driving around the world. Wildlife has appeared back in places it hasn't been spotted in decades, and we've stopped buying a takeaway coffee cup and plastic wrapped lunch every day while on the go and instead discovered the joy of making coffee at home. At the same time, there's been some negative impacts on our environment. Personal protective equipment has become a crucial life-saving tool that we can't do without during a time of a pandemic. And it's almost always made from single-use plastic. Now, back home in London, every time I go for a walk, I see discarded gloves and masks. I can only imagine what we're going to find when we get back out to sea for our research next year. But with both the good and the bad, one thing is for sure, the COVID-19 pandemic has given us all a chance to pause, an opportunity to take stock of the way we live our lives to rethink our values and consider what we want life to be like when it resumes again. We have a chance to hit the reset button and do things differently going forward. This kind of shift moment is similar to what I experienced age 21 setting off from the UK for a new job as an architect in Australia. I wanted to get there without taking an aeroplane, so I ended up hitchhiking on a boat across the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. And there, 800 miles from nearest land, I jumped over the side of our boat for a morning wash. When I surfaced, I opened my eyes to see a toothbrush floating by, then a cigarette lighter and a bottle top. It didn't make any sense. How could there be plastic this far from a human being? And ultimately, I began to ask, how could we fix it? This was my shift moment, that point in time when everything changed and I couldn't look back. One thing I learned from being at sea is how you constantly have to react to the changes in the environment around you. If the wind picks up or the waves change direction, you have to adjust your sails and change your course. Often your life depends on that response. At this moment, I realized I needed to shift my own course, my career. And instead of becoming an architect, I set off to try and tackle the growing issue of plastic 
pollution. I set up an organisation called X Expedition, running all women sailing voyages to explore the true causes of and solutions to the plastics issue. Over the past five years, hundreds of women from all around the world have joined us on board to carry out research, share those findings, and most importantly, work out their role in tackling the issue when they get home. We set sail for the gyres, these accumulation zones where all this plastic eventually ends up. The surprising thing on getting there is that rather than being confronted by islands of plastic that we could scoop up and return to land, we discovered beautiful blue ocean. We see a piece of plastic here and a piece of plastic there. But we know that 8 million tonnes of plastic are going into our ocean every year. And yet here, in the centre of these gyres, there's only a handful of pieces within sight. So where's the rest? We built a trawl and dragged it along the surface of the water and pulled it back on board to find handfuls of tiny fragments, what we call microplastics. The UV rays from the sun, the wind and the waves break big bits of plastic down into these tiny fragments. They're smaller than your little fingernail and you can't see them with your eyes on the surface or by satellite image from space. Over the years we have crisscrossed our way around the world and we found the same thing everywhere. A plastic soup. Hundreds thousands, what we now know to be trillions of tiny bits of plastic instead. Hard to see and much harder to clean up. They're sinking to the seabed and getting into the food chain. Trying to extract plastic from mid-ocean is the hardest challenge and instead we have an opportunity right now here on our doorsteps to turn off the tap at the source. Our scientific work helps us identify the causes of this plastic soup. Is it packaging or could it be microfibers coming from our clothes when we put them in the washing machine? Or tyre dust coming from our cars every time we go for a drive? The list of sources is endless, which means the list of solutions is two. There's no silver bullet solution to solve the plastic crisis. We need to tackle the problem from every angle. This is why on X Expedition our crew is made up of people from all sectors. We have scientists working alongside filmmakers, artists, teachers, designers, industry leaders and policy makers. We all have a role to play and our voyages help individuals to find theirs. But our work at sea has come to a halt because of Covid. We've had to pause our project, leave the boat in Tahiti and shift our focus to see how we can create change differently. In the first few months of lockdown, we built an online platform called shift.how to help people navigate these hundreds of ways to tackle plastic pollution and find their place to start. It uses sophisticated technology to help you find a solution that's right for you, from simple consumer choices to more complex industry action. Using technology in this way has allowed us to scale up the shift method and therefore the impact that can be made through collective action. I can't help but to see the parallels between solving plastic pollution and how we deal with other global problems, including COVID. Especially when it comes to both the importance of collective action and the diversity of solutions needed. A combination of face masks, social distancing and hand washing is needed alongside testing, vaccines, treatments and the endless sessions on Zoom. So one thing is going to solve it. No one thing is going to solve it. We need to approach the problem from every angle. 
We've realised the virus doesn't know political boundaries in the same way the ocean and pollution doesn't either. We share one planet and global problems transcend all boundaries, which means the solutions need to as well. Despite this global mindset, we see merit in thinking locally, bringing supply chains back into our control and having greater visibility on where our resources come from and where our waste goes. We can use technology to give us greater transparency and connectivity to both nature and to one another. COVID for me has felt a bit like sailing across an ocean with 7 billion people watching the wind speed rise as the next squall hits, adjusting our sails and waiting for the blow to pass. We come out the other side bruised and battered, but with our eyes open to the fragility of our planet and the vulnerability of ourselves. We appreciate the small things. We reset our priorities and feel a greater sense of purpose when we reach shore. There's no buffer at sea between us and the natural world. We are forced to feel the power of something beyond our control. We think about our systems and how to solve problems. We have to act and we have to do it now. COVID has broken down our buffer. It's exposed the fragility of our health our economy, our environment, and our politics. Most of all, we've realized that it isn't someone else's problem. It has taken a crisis to challenge how we live our lives. So during this moment of pause, let's take this opportunity to come out of lockdown better than we started.